everybody and welcome. If you are in any way, shape or form interested in spaceflight, you have already seen these images. SpaceX catching the 71 meter tall super heavy booster with the chopsticks of their launch tower. And because that was just so awesome, you're going to see these images a whole lot more throughout this video. But what I want to talk about is not a play-by-play -play recap. Other channels have done those already. And I did a reaction video on the catch itself, link is in the description. What I want to focus on today are five things why Flight Test 5 is a pivotal point in spaceflight history. If you are interested in all things space and also recreating historic spacecraft in space games like Kerbal Space Program, maybe you can help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers and hit that button down there to subscribe to this channel. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start with the first reason why Flight 5 matters. Flown Raptors. You can simulate a lot of things nowadays, but I bet the engineers at SpaceX are just itching to pour over those Raptor engines and take them apart to see how they did during liftoff, boost back and landing burn. If you remember, the engine compartment was subject to a huge amount of stress. Vibration, heat, aerodynamic drag, the works. Just look at this tracking shot from Everyday Astronauts livestream where you can see the entire section glowing while the booster raced back to Earth after delivering Starship to the upper atmosphere. All 33 Raptor engines appear to have survived the mission. While I suspected something exploded during the catch attempt while doing my reaction, what I thought to be an explosion was just propellant being vented and those gases catching on fire. Something was damaged though. One of the chines on the side of the booster was ripped apart and the debris flying away in combination with the vent flames led me to believe there was an explosion. However, there was some further disintegration going on after the booster was safely caught and the Raptors had shut down. During NASA spaceflight stream you could see stuff drop from the engine compartment. Not sure what it was though. But you know who is going to find out? Those SpaceX engineers I mentioned. I bet they're having a field day taking apart Booster 12 and pouring over every piece of those engines to figure out how to maybe improve them for future flights. Yes, SpaceX have tested the Raptor engine extensively at their facility in McGregor, but having actually flown engines back safe and sound to work on will provide invaluable data. And data leads to improvements, just like what helped during Flight 5, namely the New Thermal Protection During the re-entry phase of Flight 4, the thermal protection system for Starship proved to be not completely sufficient as evidenced by the little flap that could. The heat started melting through the stainless steel and yet after that entire ordeal the flap was still able to perform to assist in the belly flop, flip and burn maneuvers to bring Starship down to the surface. El Filippo on my Discord server created this to commemorate the occasion. In response to this event, SpaceX modified Starship's Thermal Protection System, or TPS for short. New types of tiles were used together with an additional layer of protection to dissipate the heat. The effect was that Starship came down much more intact this time around. There was some heat breaking through at the seam of the hinges, but nothing like during Flight 4. And Starship managed to apparently do a pinpoint landing in the Indian Ocean because it came down very close to one of the buoys SpaceX had placed there in anticipation of the splashdown. That splashdown appeared to be very much under control with the landing velocity when the engines cut out at just 7 km per second. A brisk walking pace. But then again the ship exploded after tipping over into the water. So while the booster catch was super impressive, Starship's performance was nothing to scoff at either. I mean the new TPS worked fine and also the landing accuracy was really good. And seeing all this progress gave a lot of people pause because SpaceX leaves everyone behind. One of the most striking reactions to the successful fifth flight test came from Rocket Factory Augsburg. The promising new space startup from Germany praised SpaceX's performance but also gave a dire warning to decision makers in Europe that they are falling further and further behind the rest of the world. RFA says that Europe will quickly sink into insignificance when it comes to the exploration of space, its resources and its potential. Considering that Europe's newest space vehicle, the Ariane 6 launch vehicle, is probably a decade behind, say, the Falcon 9, 
it's hard to argue with that sentiment. And the comments beneath that post are very much in agreement. But it's not just Europe. Nobody working on space launches is even close to that type of rapid reusability that SpaceX is promising to deliver with Starship. I would not be surprised if the Chinese are going to be the first to at least reach parity with Falcon 9 long before Europe, Russia, India or Japan will have anything in their arsenal that even comes close. Not sure if RFA did itself any favors with the people controlling funding of space companies in Europe by lashing out at the structures that are in place, but you cannot argue with SpaceX's success and everyone else's lack thereof. Which leads me to my next item. Believe what they tell us. SpaceX told us they would recover their Falcon 9 boosters and refly them. People said it was not possible. And yet, here we are with the European Space Agency's HERA mission being launched on top of a Falcon 9 rocket with a booster that was flown for the 23rd time. A booster that had already flown astronauts before. When SpaceX presented the Falcon Heavy with its 27 engines, 9 on each core, people doubted that it was possible to safely control this many engines. Probably the ghost of the N1 was haunting those people since having 30 engines back in the late 1960s was very difficult to control. But Falcon Heavy performed flawlessly every time and those dual booster returns are truly a sight to behold. SpaceX told us they would build the world's largest and most powerful rocket with Starship. People said it was not possible, and yet it has flown five times now. People were skeptical about the aerodynamic re-entry and the belly flop maneuver with the flip and burn afterwards. And yet, Starship proved that it was possible. The plan to catch the booster with the launch shower comes across as ridiculous at first, but if you want to save mass for landing gear and save time by not having to transport the landed booster back to the launch site, you need to find a way to land it back where it came from if you want to have rapid reusability. I mean, airplanes start and land on the same runway, don't they? Again, people doubted this was feasible. And yet, the super heavy booster was caught safely by the launch tower chopsticks. After Flight 5, nobody should ever doubt SpaceX when they say they are going to do something. Sure, the end result might look different from the ambitious renders and it might take a whole lot longer than initially planned, but eventually they will reach their goals. Speaking of reaching something, we have reached the fifth and final item on my list and it's one step closer to the moon. Some say that Starship is just there to have a cheaper way to deliver Starlink satellites to orbit. And to a certain extent, this will hold true. As a private company, SpaceX aims to make a profit and one big part of that is reducing costs wherever possible. If both ship and booster can be reused and reflown within a short interval, then SpaceX will have an even cheaper space transportation system on their hands than what they have now with Falcon 9. And that rocket already is the most affordable ride to space with a more than 99% success rate. But one big milestone on Starship's roadmap is the moon. Yes, NASA has selected a variant of Starship for the human landing system for Artemis 3, the mission that is designed to put astronauts back onto the surface of the moon for the first time since 1972. The mission is officially set for 2026, but since it not only requires Starship to be ready to carry humans to the surface of the moon, orbital refueling to work reliably and the gateway space station around the moon to be in service, chances are that they will slip further into the future. Nevertheless, Flight 5 has brought SpaceX one step closer to having another human being stepping onto the surface of the moon, no matter when it is going to happen. Now that you know my 5 reasons why I believe Flight 5 was historic, let me know your thoughts in those comments down below. What was the most significant aspect of this test? Did you watch it live while it was happening? And be honest, how often have you rewatched that booster being caught by the Mechazilla launch tower? I've heard rumblings that Flight 6 for Starship might happen already in December, although sometime early 2025 seems more likely. The current candidate for this test is Starship number 31. However, since Ship 30 has worked so well, maybe SpaceX will reshuffle the ships for Flight 6 and have Ship 33 do the sixth flight already. It is the first Block 2 Starship with new flap design, which should improve its resiliency during re-entry and it is 1.8 meter taller than the previous ships. 
From what we know so far, Ship 33 has been fully stacked since August 23rd. But whenever Flight 6 will happen and which starship will actually perform it, excitement will be guaranteed again. I hope what I do on this channel also excites some of you and if it does, maybe I can interest you on joining me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. There is behind the scenes content, bonus material and when you go for a higher tier, you will get early access to videos and also your name will show up here, just like all of these wonderful people. Thank you so much for your support. This week was a bit unusual because of everything that had happened. I mean, right after Starship, SpaceX launched Falcon Heavy and sent the really fascinating Europa Clipper mission on its way to Jupiter. So much going on in space right now, but I wouldn't have it any other way. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.